after the uh, pre uh, prerequisite steps are completed, uh, prerequisite steps meaning what we just saw, uh, we did like you know upgrade uh, like activating the BRM related uh, BC sets or in, you know setting up of integration scenarios, um, connection you know connector to connector uh, group uh, uh, assignment. Some of these things we would have already done because of implementing ARA, but there were some steps like, you know, activating of BRM, um, BC sets, right? So you would activate the BC sets as per what your needs are going to be, right? So after the prerequisite steps are done uh, as post, uh, post installation steps, um, for, we need to implement or we need to customize uh, the module too. So we have to go, th go through the configuration steps for now for implementing the module. And let us see briefly what those uh, steps are. So the first step uh, um, that we do is uh, deactivating the role types, right? And these are part of stroke configuration. The customization is done using in the transaction is SPRO. So let us briefly go over um, the various customization steps that we have to perform in order to implement a BRM. Okay, uh, you have to activate um, the roles or deactivate the roles. Let's say that deactivate the role types that you're not going to use. So SAP gives you a um, number of role types, such as the business roles, composite roles, composite, you know, CUA composite roles, derived roles, group, profiles, single roles, and template roles. So in this particular step, you need to deactivate the roles that you're not going to use. Okay, so depending on your implementation, depending on your environments, you would have to say, okay, you're not going to use, let's say, CUA composite role or a group or a template. You have to specify that in the step. And most of the steps that you're going to see are also are role attributes, okay? So deactivating of role types is a role attribute, okay? Uh, the role type is one of the role attributes. So for example, um, main meaning of the role type labels, right? Labels for role types. That's another attribute that you'd have to uh, maintain. Uh, some of the steps are, again, some of the steps are optional. Some of them are mandatory. Okay, so another step that you do is to specify for each of these roles that you're going to use uh, or implement, the role types that you implement, you also have to specify the length of those roles. So for example, single, single, role, single roles, are, could be of 32 lengths, uh, 32 character length. Um, business roles could be 72 character length. So you can specify the role length that you want to use, the length of the roles, okay? Um, specify naming conventions, right? So you can also specify whether, uh, you know, uh, what role naming convention you would like to follow uh, for composite roles or derived roles or, uh, or um, you know, business roles. Whatever role type you want to use, you can specify a naming convention for that. Uh, SAP says it's an optional um, step. You don't need to, because in, when, you try, when, you, when you go and try to create a single role, if you don't enforce a role naming convention, as if the access control lets you give what you know name, whatever name you want. It's a free text field, the role name. But it's a good idea to have a um, role naming convention uh, because it maintains uh, a particular pattern or a particular uh, you know a length of a role and it enforces a specific consistency in uh, role naming role names, basically. 
So we'll see an example uh, when we create a role, we'll come, come back to this screenshot again. This is an example of a single role, um, 30 characters and then, um, so yeah, so this is a 30 character length. It's not 32 actually. The role length is actually 30 characters, okay, not 32. Similarly, composite roles, right? So how do we, we're going to utilize this example uh, to split up and define our uh, role naming convention. Uh, project and product release, you know, you can all, you, you can associate the role so that you create in BRM with uh, project releases and uh, project types. So product uh, types, uh, the product names basically. So you'll have to create your project uh, and your product release names in uh, as part of the customization. Um, you also have to define um, how sensitive the role is, right? So we will see what uh, SAP gives you certain default sensitivity level um, types, but we can customize your own too. A role status, whether status of the role, whether the role is in a production state or a development stage state or a testing state. You can specify all these um, critical level, how critical the roles are, right? Can't define companies. Um, so if you have multiple companies, you can create those companies and associate the roles belonging to uh, those companies. Maintain functional areas. Um, what functional area does the role belong to? You know, in your company, right? If it belongs to engineering department or a HR department or a sales department. So you can specify that. So all of these, when you start creating these roles, you have, these are the role attributes, you know, you can associate this, these uh, elements uh, to the role. So when you create a role, you can say, okay, so this role is for engineering department, you know, so and so role is for, uh, you know, sales order department, sales, sales, sales uh, department. So this, all these things from, you know, become uh, role attributes. Uh, attributes of the role, organization level mapping. Another important um, uh, cust uh, customizing area that uh, I think it is uh, where you maintain your organizational structure, okay? So that could be used in uh, when creating derived roles, okay? So that's another important part. You don't have to do this, you know, again, this is one of those optional things, but some of these things when you do it, well, it could be used in role management. Also, uh, in when you're trying to implement ARM, so they know MSM, you know, BRF plus and MSMP, you can utilize these role attributes to, uh, you know, to create your process workflow. All right, so prerequisites type. So this is, again, uh, one of those attributes where you decide uh, that what are the prerequisites for uh, assigning a particular role to a user, okay? You can define that too. So define uh, prerequisites. So this is the prerequisite types and then this is the prerequisites for the roles, okay? And then you also have to, and finally you have the role methodology, okay? So what is the methodology that you want to follow? Meaning, you know, what are the different stages or uh, that a role creation or role modification process has to go through? Okay, so we have to, uh, we'll define our, uh, the methodology and we'll see that in a little detail. And apart from this, you also have to another role attribute that you have uh, is, uh, associating the role with the business uh, process and a sub process. And those are a mandatory uh, two um, fields or two elements that every role has to be associated with business process and business sub process. We will see how to, you know, create a business process and, you know, sub process. We'll create that uh, before some of this, before we go through some of the steps. Okay, so these are about uh, 16 or 17 some odd steps 
customization steps that you have to go through uh, for a normal uh, BRM implementation. We are not talking about the steps related to MS BRF plus and MSMP here right now. So, so let us now see um, as a demo, uh, how do we go and deactivate um, the role types. <clears throat> 